Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. The North Vietnamese Air Force received their first MiG-21 fighters in late 1965. American pilots began to spot the new aircraft in early 1966, but their first combat with the new type took place in April, when US Air Force pilot Major Paul Gilmore shot down a MiG-21 flown by a future ace, Nguyen Hong Ni. This combat was described in detail in another video on this channel, and you can watch it if you missed it. Four more MiG-21s were credited to US Air Force Phantoms by the end of 1966. US Navy pilots, on the other hand, had fewer chances of spotting the new Vietnamese fighter, as it was mostly used over route packs assigned to the Air Force. But they were nevertheless familiar with their tactics, which was usually based on slashing attacks from above and then quick escapes without much dogfighting. On 10th of August 1967, two carriers, USS Constellation and USS Intrepid were to launch airstrikes against a transshipment point at Fu Lai. Part of the fighter cover were two F-4Bs from Constellation's VF-142 on the Barcap mission. The flight leader was Lt. Commander Bob Davis, with Lt. Commander Sweet Ely in the back seat. On the wing were Lt. Guy Freeborn, with Lt. Junior Grade Bob Elliott in the back seat. Freeborn and Elliott's Phantom had been converted back to F-4B variant from F-4G. This obscure Phantom version, not to be confused with the Wild Weasel Phantom, was used to test a new air-to-ground data link and automatic power compensation which enabled hands-off carrier landings. It was also used to test the new tactical green camouflage. Eventually, all 12 examples were converted back to F-4B. The data link became standard in the F-4J, while the green camouflage was abandoned, along with the G designation which was later reused by the Air Force for their Wild Weasel Phantom. As the two Phantoms arrived to their patrol area at Nam Dinh, they began a left-hand pattern at 16,000 feet of altitude. There was a cloud cover at 22,000 feet, and knowing the MiG-21's tactic of diving to attack through clouds under GCI guidance, the Navy pilots were hoping to spot them as they descended. Despite the lack of height superiority, this tactic had a few advantages. The mix could be easier to spot against the overcast, and as the Vietnamese pilots changed from instrumental to visual flight, they might be disorientated for a few moments. The Constellation strike group hit their targets at 12.30, and the two Phantom crews could see some of the action. As the strikers were pulling off, the Phantom flight heard several MiG warnings. The two air crews began turning their heads, hoping to spot the interceptors, but they were nowhere in sight. They then switched to the frequency of the Intrepid strike and attempted to contact them, but there was no answer. Only later they found that the entire Intrepid strike was cancelled due to bad weather. As they were turning back north, the MiG calls were getting more specific, and the two Rios were plotting intercept courses based on them. Then, a warning called the MiGs at 15 miles directly behind the Phantoms, and in a good position to bounce them. Davis broke hard left, and as Freeborn was following, he spotted two silhouettes. The MiGs had descended out of the cloud layer and were now heading north at 400 knots. The Phantoms were still in a hard left turn, maneuvering behind the MiGs which were unaware of them. The Navy pilots engaged their afterburners and prepared for attack. The MiGs were flying in a similar formation, the wingmen about 100 meters left and astern of the leader.
Lieutenant Commander Davis called the left MiG, and as his Rio achieved the radar lock, he pressed the button for a Sparrow launch. Nothing happened, and the missile stayed under the Phantom's fuselage. He tried launching another Sparrow, but this one too chose not to cooperate. Lieutenant Freeborn chose the A-9 Sidewinder as his first weapon. His Rio was very inexperienced, and he preferred to rely on the weapon he could use himself. The missile exploded near the MiG, and it started to trail smoke or fuel. At the same time, Davis switched to Sidewinders, too, and launched one at his MiG. The missile exploded, but just like the one launched by Freeborn, it didn't destroy the MiG, which kept flying. Davis launched another one, but it went ballistic and missed. The MiGs now realized they were under attack, and they began to weave. As the Phantoms were rapidly approaching, Davis performed a high yo-yo maneuver to stay behind. As the MiGs changed their relative position, Davis was now behind the Freeborn's MiG. Lieutenant Freeborn was still following his original target and getting ready to launch another Sidewinder. But Davis, who was now at 14,000 feet and behind the same MiG, got a good Sidewinder tone. He launched his Sidewinder number 3, and then also 4 a few seconds later. This time, both missiles hit. The MiG pilot, Bui Din Kin, successfully ejected, but sadly, he was killed by local militiamen who mistook him for an American. Lieutenant Freeborn was unpleasantly surprised to see his target shot down by his leader. The mission tape registered his exclamation, the bastard killed my MiG. But as the other MiG, flown by Dong Van Song, was attempting to evade the Phantoms, Lieutenant Freeborn turned his attention to it. He put his Phantom behind the MiG and heard a good missile tone. He squeezed the trigger, but nothing happened. Freeborn tried again, and the next Sidewinder launched. It achieved a direct hit, and the mix spun towards the Earth. Dong Van Song ejected and survived. This was not his first ejection, as he had previously been shot down by a US Air Force F-4C on 5th of November 1966. By the end of the war, he was officially credited with four victories, one of them shared.
this was not the first US Navy victory over MiG-21s. The distinction goes to an F-8 Crusader pilot who accomplished that on 9 October 1966. But this was the first US Navy Phantom victory over the MiG-21. The Navy pilots demonstrated good tactics, but poor weapon reliability deprived them of quick kills and brought the risk of a prolonged dogfight. No less than 9 missiles were launched, or at least launches were attempted by Davis and Freeborn to achieve 2 kills. Lack of internal gun was again demonstrated, and that problem was never solved by the US Navy on their Phantoms, unlike the Air Force which introduced the gun-equipped F-4E. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal to keep the channel in business. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.